How's it going everybody? This is Pete the Bush. Over the years, I've used a lot of computer mice, both wired and wireless. So today I'm gonna share with you some insights I have just from using it over at least 10 years on these mice. So here are all my mice. I actually own all of these and I've used them at one point or another. This stuff right here are all my wired mice that I had. This used to be my main wireless mouse and now I kind of use these guys the most. I sorted the wireless mouse based on how well they work. This one being my favorite. The wired mice also has a sorting and let me talk about the wired mice first. So over here is a really old mouse. It's an IntelliMouse Explore USB and PS2 compatible. It's made by Microsoft and I think I got it sometime around 2002 or something like that. And you can see the rubber part over here kind of disintegrated so I removed it. You gotta watch out for the rubbery type of material that's on your mouse because those things are the things that disintegrate and it's gonna cause your mouse to be non-functional just like this one. Now I have a really tiny mouse here. It's a Targus. And you might find it cute and very portable, right? Um, you might think, oh, let me get this because then I don't have to carry a giant mouse. Well, the thing is I use this for a while and it's cute at first, but then after you use it a while, it really strains your hand because you can see you have to kind of squeeze your hand into a ball and holding in this position is not very ergonomic. And so I don't really recommend any uh, tiny mouse like this. Rather, I would recommend get this Logitech Anywhere MX mouse instead as a portable one. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in where to get one. Next up is this Microsoft Optical Mouse Blue. It's just a very basic mouse. There's nothing fancy about it. But the thing is, it only has two buttons and the wheel. I've grown very accustomed to pushing the back button here to go back on the browser. I mainly use the left click, right click, scroll wheel, and the back button the most. Instinctively, I would use the back button. So when I encounter a mouse without a back button, I would get really frustrated and my productivity would actually go down. Probably won't ever try to get a mouse without a back button anymore. Here, this one is a 3M ergonomic large. So at some point, I used the mouse a little too long and my wrist started hurting a little bit. So I got this mouse thinking that I can uh, make my hand upright. You basically have these various buttons that you can assign for left, right, and middle click. I noticed that when I'm using this, it really causes you to reduce your speed of selecting something because you actually have to lift your elbow over here in order to move the whole arm. Whereas for a mouse, your elbow can be sitting down and you can, you can move various ways. Because if your elbow is planted on the desk, you can't really go forward and back all that much. You actually have to lift your elbow to go forward and back. So I ended up not using this mouse. This one is a great all around mouse, but then it's wired. So the wired part is going to get attached, right? And you're gonna move your mouse and then this is gonna get tangled on something and it's gonna get annoying. But the good thing about this is you never have to charge it. So here's my wireless mouse and it was great when it lasted. So you have a USB port here, it connects to here and the wireless goes from here into here. And also the cradle here charges your mouse. Internally, there is some sort of rechargeable battery. I think it's a lithium ion in there. So whenever your battery is low, you actually have to stick this on your cradle to charge it. For several years, this style was like the state of the art style because you can charge your mouse. The problem with this is that, let's say you've been using your mouse for a long time, you always forget to charge, but one time it gets critically low, which means you have to set your mouse on the cradle here to charge it for a while before you can actually use it. So this is a really crappy part of the mouse because you actually have to stop working in order to charge. There's no way to charge this any other way. So this is one of the major flaws of this early version wireless mouse. I think this is called the MX-1000. Next up are my favorite mice now. This is the MX Anywhere mouse. It works great because it also works on glass. And then when you remove this, it has your two batteries here, which uh, it takes alkaline or you can stick envelopes in there or whatnot. And um, you have a little storage compartment for the receiver. So you can stow this away uh, in there when you're not using it. It comes with this little case, it's great. So that your mouse won't get scratched up when you're uh, taking it around. 
And when you need to use it, you open up the lid, you take this, stick it in your computer, you close the lid back up, and you open this little hatch here, and then it knows, oh, you wanna use it, and you, so you're turning it on. So if it's off, it'll be in completely low power mode and it's not consuming any electricity at all. It's on, let me switch to switch, it turns off. So I've been enjoying this mouse a lot and I recommend it. Next up is this Performance MX mouse. It has this little scroll wheel here that it would either turn freely or you can turn it on in the software and it will have detents. So it will be like click, click, click every time you you uh, want to scroll up or down. It does have the back button that I like. I don't actually use this zoom or forward too much, nor do I use this funny button nor the center button I use rarely. And this uh, task switch button is over here. The thing is whenever you're presented with all these buttons, you have a learning curve to learn to use all these buttons instinctively. However, what if suddenly you need to use some computer that uh, is not your personal computer, you have some random crappy mouse like this, and you're used to using the back button and all these fancy buttons, then you feel very handicapped. So just remember that every time you learn to use a new button instinctively, that you're going to be that much restricted when you use a mouse that is not your regular mouse. So let me just show you some accessories that comes with this. It has a charger and has these various cables and this case. So this thing has the receiver, okay? So when you plug this into your computer, you can have this extender to, to plug it into, maybe your laptop or something. Or if you have a desktop, you need to plug it in the back. It has this extension cable. You plug it in the back of the computer and you sneak this somewhere to the front of your computer you know, on your desk or something, then you have your receiver much closer. I never had the requirement to need this because my usually my desktop computer is close enough, so I just plug this into the nearest USB port and it works just fine. So I don't really need these extension cables here. This is the charge cable, so you just plug this USB in, and if you happen to run out of battery somehow while you're using it, you can just plug this in and you can just keep on using the mouse, which is great because there's zero downtime. Versus this older mouse, if you run out of battery, you have to stick it on the cradle and you have no mouse to use and you gotta find some other mouse, which, which you end up having to put another little mouse around just so that in case this one runs out of battery, you can use this one. So this is a really bad idea over here. Aside from this cable thing that you can charge with, neat thing is that you can actually remove this rechargeable battery. It actually comes with this Eneloop battery. And so if you happen to run out of battery, you can just pop this one out, put a brand new one in, and you're ready to go. Although I don't recommend this as a portable mouse because you can see it's quite big and hefty. It's quite thick, it's almost two inches thick. Whereas this one is actually the smallest you should go for a portable mouse. And this is acceptable to me um, after using it in comparison to this tiny one. This would cramp your hand. One thing to note is that in the early days, wireless mouse, generally Logitech had the lowest latency so that gamers really like Logitech ones and basically everyone used Logitech mice. But these days, wireless mouse performance is getting a lot narrower, so you can actually buy various different brands and they would be pretty similar. And you know, they're all pretty not bad. So there you have it. I hope you like the review of all these eight devices, which I've actually used for a really, really long time. And I can tell you about the reliability of it, how comfortable it is, and actual usage scenarios like uh, if it runs out of battery, what you have to do and stuff like that. So don't forget, I do have links to all of these devices, uh, at least the ones that you can still buy in the video description below if you're interested. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. It helped me and this channel a lot. If you have a question about these mice, about the performance of it, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe over here. Thanks for watching.